Hey, I'm filming a redemption episode. I wanna. Last couple episodes haven't been very good. I want a redemption arc here, starting right now. Oh, this is a good opponent to play. 30, 60, 1364, Spain, Europe. Um, and we're playing against the French, so I gotta show you guys my French line. It's very interesting. After d5, we're gonna play bishop b2, gambling. It's a very interesting line. And also, it just gets your opponent out of theory. And, and I dislike the French because for reason. They play these weird lines where they, um, I just don't want to deal with this. They advanced French variation where they go after your D pawn. Get a real, a real weakness. I think you're supposed to push you. Cool. The idea is we're actually going to play C3. I know it looks stupid. Um, there's actually literally no downside to it. Like, I know the bishop looks idiotic here. This is a way to get around the French going after your deep on. That being a whole problem, problematic issue. Here, really, I think we're spending some five. You don't have to play bishop b5, but if you're ever worried about losing this d-pawn... Oh, it was on the great... Trading off the white squared bishop for that knight really secures your bishop for the rest of the game. But I don't think I'm going to do that. I think I'm just going to play at least knight d2 for now. I think I want to keep my options available for bishop d3. Yeah, I think bishop b5 is more precise, but I think bishop d3 is more... What's the word? Ambitious. This is great, because you get the French players out of theory. It's not a position most French players know. They're not familiar, but not like super out of the warehouse. It's not like if you're a French player, you're unfamiliar with such a pawn structure. But uh, at the same time, if you're like ideally, you don't want this setup. The way French players usually play is they they make this D pawn a week, very similar to how I play Karakhan. I think in many lines, Arakan can transpose if you play the advanced variation of c5. That can often pose into a. Okay. Taken back. That's just. Might try something like bishop b4 here. Not that it really does anything. I think I'll just castle. In a5. a3. Yeah. Text, 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 text. I'd rather not trade queens off here, I think. I'm fairly confident here. It does help that our opponent is red thirteen sixty four. Um, so I'm pretty sure. Actually, no, I don't even have to think about this move. Green view. It's just this is just very easy. Let's just play it fast. Looks like we lose tempo from this move, but white square bishop is not that bad here on b one. The only downside that the rook can't. 
a bit better of the work was on C1. After we kick the knight away, we have ideas of queen D C2. Not really threatening mate. D6 creates weaknesses. I'm just going to kick the knight out immediate. Maybe. I'm going to kick the knight out. I'm going to castle. And when he takes, I'll retake at the knight. Takes, I'll take back with the pawn. The good things about this position is I know for a fact white is slightly better here. I also know that, um, well, I guess I don't know for a fact at this point that white's slightly better. He's got the two pawns in the fennel, but we have way more space. Okay. I think I'm going to play knight f3. I like the fact that we're ahead of time. I just want to think for a second, though. Yeah, I think I'm gonna play knight f3, get the bishop here, and queen here on b3. You know, it's gotten a little matey. I think g6 really weakens this position. So I'd love to see that. Knight f3 adds another supporter to the e pawn. We're gonna threaten a little matey. This stops any knight shenanigans. There. Realize this bishop. I don't want. I might play queen d2 and the. I might have to play this a little slower than I might. Yeah, I think I just play queen d2. I think um, bishop here is not pliable. Bishop here would take about a second thought. Guys like something like this, the weak in our pawn structure. I think I'll go for knight d4. Takes here, I, I mean, that's not good. That pawn's not hanging. The trade. I hope benefits the right. Yeah, we're staying ahead on the clock here. Thinking on our opponent's turn, we expected that move. Seems very logical. I think I'm gonna take back with the bishop. Now, queen makes some sense, but the problem is the queen can't get to any squares where it's attacking the. Although I would say, if he takes with the knight, you take with bishop, then he his bishop in. Tempo. Maybe you do play take with queen. That way, if you try something like that, you just have a. And this pawn's not hanging because that pawn's that's a definitely an untakeable pawn. I want to pay attention to bishop sacks in this. There are times when playable. And we also don't want to take his knight and move his pawn. Chance we want to get this knight in. The moment it'd be a bad. One of the things I really like what we have going for us is just on the clock. After last game. I'm paying attention to the clock. 
15 minute games. And that feels like a lot of time, but get out of hand quickly. And we do want to start using it. We have a five minute advantage. If you have a time advantage, it doesn't mean anything. You can take advantage of it. And clearly he's got to protect this pawn somehow. And there's only two rays I can see him realistically doing. And this one he probably won't do because they will block his wood. And it's he just moved his bishop from there. So he do that, right? But he's going to play this. Thought process is what do we want to play? And we can do that move. Definitely not taking his knight. Well, I think we take the queen here. Um, I dislike his bishop coming here. For I'm going to take out the queen here. Might play rook c8 and hopes to get this. I'll probably just play b4. I mean, that creates some dark square weaknesses. But... Yeah, I don't know if you'd want to play before. Okay, we just need to continue to play accurately. Played a very good game so far. Well, time advantage is quite nice. Okay, so he did exactly once to prep that. I'm gonna play b4. Might play a5 in response. In which case, I think I'm gonna play bishop d3. I can also see rook e1. I think I'd probably play bishop d3. Let's play this. Ups any shenanigans here. I think this would be a very. I don't want that. Can't allow his bishop to get on this diagonal. And to think, a5 seems very logical. No opponent. Doesn't do anything. Yeah, I think I'll just play bishop d3. Just slowly improve my position. This trade doesn't threaten anything. The work trade comes in. I don't think I care. Does this work infantry in anywhere here? No. He can come here, but bishop d3 defends. In a position like this where I, I'm confident I'm better than my opponent, I want to keep pieces on the board if possible. My opponent's getting low in time. They might want to trade off and try to get an endgame as quickly as possible if they block you. Especially since they have the much lower rating, their gain rating even if it's a draw. So if I was black here, I'd be trying to trade material off. If he doesn't move his queen, we can take control of the C file. But either way, we can take control. A little more powerful. It's like normally in this kind of position, I'd be trying to get my crane somewhere here to get an attack going. But unfortunately, it's just not possible. We can maybe think about a rook lift. Some idea there. And that could work. But you have to think about a move like that. Some danger involved with it. 
Full stop as soon as you go here, he has this. Probably not a threat. You could probably just ignore that and continue the plan to come. But it is something you have to be aware of. Okay, well, that stop. F4 is a move here. But I'm not sure what it accomplishes. Bishop either comes back or comes here. Actually, done. After say this, we do have this move. I mean, I'm, I'm pretty sure F4 is but oh, F4 has got to be really good. It has to move his bishop one of the squares. Not going to be a sack there. But I was saying I might probably move the bishop back here. Look, we're going to open stuff up here, and I think that's going to favor us. Look at this. I'm a big fan of F4, F5. It gives him some attacking options as well. This is if he plays bishop h6 here and we play f5. This threat is looming. We have to pay attention to that. Obviously, it doesn't work, but you have to pay attention because it could work at some point. F5, if he doesn't take, we even have the option of f6. Could be strong. I think we. F5, like say he defends, you'd have to think about maybe playing F6 there. You can play G6, close the position down. Could be the downside. Or not if you put green on E7. If you put it. You could just play G6, close the position down. I don't think white's a lot better in that position. Plan is to play F5. Now, if he tanks, do you take the work of the bishop? Bishop makes sense. Maybe you can get a trade off there. Okay, so this is where we want to start using time. I was confident in this f5 move. Okay, let's calculate if he takes. I think bishop takes. It comes up an attack on the book. Yeah, I think bishop takes. Yeah, I, I like bishop takes. I think I'll go ahead and free. It's not le less about the time, but more about getting in his head. He's getting long time. We keep playing fast. Now, you don't want to play fast just for playing fast sick. But if you've already decided on it, very confident. Then I'll I know this gets in my head when I'm getting low on time at a tricky position and my opponent feels like he's playing a good move every move quickly. That's that's intimidating. We're attacking the rook. That blunders the pawn, right? Bishop, King over X. That looks like it blunders the pawn. Actually, it almost blunders more than that. Stop the check. He blocked the bishop. Oh, you might be able to block the bishop. I thought he couldn't. I'm looking at the position. I think he blocked the bishop. But if he blocks with the bishop, we can put his king on f7. I mean, that, that position. Very good for us. So I'm assuming
This doesn't work. Yikes. Yikes. Mm, it's not as good. I thought it would be. Does E6 work there? X back. Don't see the continuation. To the keen blocks. We're definitely taking here, right? Unless there's a rook. I think just take your crane. No, you get a double check, so you can't. This is an option. Actually, that'd be. Well, he can take here. But no, it's not an option. Oh, you could play this, I suppose. What's the game back? That pick. That would be terrible. Oh, maybe that's where name. Oh, yeah. We take a bishop. He takes our cream. We play check. Check. Take his cream. Ends of work. We want to work. That looks winning. I have to see why it's not winning. Rook takes. Bishop takes. King takes. Check. E6 check is better. Putting him in the center of the board looks very good. Yeah. Okay. I'm pretty confident in Rook takes. I think. Let me calculate this one more time. Rook takes. Rook takes, Rook takes cream, back, when he has two moves, block or keen oval? Block would be horrible, so obviously it's keen oval. You take the cream, basically has to take back, then you take his rook. And then we're up at clean piece, but this doesn't work. If he takes with rook, We take back, he takes back, we maybe think about e6 in that position. I'm 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 fairly confident in this move. It only works after this is because the work is hanging after all said and done. And he has no checks to defend. Maybe. Okay, he decides to play it like that. Now we gotta decide if e6 is the move. If he takes. I assume we're running with rookie 1. You can also play. You can also play rook f1 here. He brings the queen back. This is very tricky. E6 king here. Be very logical for my opponent. Then we get moves like this. Or there. Bishop. E6 and he takes. Bishop here. I kind of like this movie six. I mean, look at this work F1. This comes back. What are we playing for there? E6, he takes. Queen check. Peter comes here.
case of rook d8, d1 looks like it kind of cleans up. So e oh, he takes. I mean, takes. Takes. Back. I like this e6 move. Maybe he holds somehow. But I wish I had more time on the clock. Here's very powerful e6. Come on, go. Adventure nothing yet. Idea, the idea being we're, we're gonna try to mate him here. <laughs> Let's see, see what he does. I think King G. Yeah. The roll. I don't know. Do we want to play the rook check? I want to play the queen check. Go. I'm going to play the queen check. If he comes this direction, I'm just going to put the rook here, and that must be good. After this, well, we can actually play. Can't play that immediately. He would take. Rook f1 comes back. Thinking rook f2. How do you defend me? The sack. I guess he could play rook. No, he can't play rook. He can't play either of those moves. Oh, but you can't play rook f7. He takes. Oh, I see the line. After keen heel, keen heel, that pawn gets pinned. Just pick up the bishop. Only move is keen heel. Pick up the bishop. Very nice. I very much enjoyed this game. We're threatening uh, a mate, so we'll probably work has to come back. And then we'll decide what we're going to do from there. Probably green here as well. So, green. That defends the mate. Yeah, we still have a lot of time on the clock. Look at his checks, he has none. That's good.
Rook F7, thinking maybe. Just Rook F7. Can't defend like this. Could defend like this. Then we could simply pick up the H pawn if we wanted to. I'm a big fan of Craig, uh, F7 here. Rook F7. Big fan of that. I think the only move to defend the pawn is this. Simply pick up the H pawn. Looks pretty strong to me. E4? Might try to move like E4? Or would be very logical. The idea is to unpin the D pawn so my crane's under the hook. I also play a move like this. Here, here, what is all. What do we prepare for that? Probably just Queen here. Attacking the rook. Attacking our rook. Covering checks. Eight. Oh. I actually kind of expect you give him a lot to think. I mean, he was thinking on my turn. That'd be very long. He still has no checks after that. E4, can we just take? Takes with the rook, that's mate. Takes with the queen, that's mate. Oh, he takes with check low. Can't just. When he put, he's on two minutes on the clock. This is a very good game. Um, happy the game. I wish it doesn't raise my confidence too much because my opponent is thirteen sixty four. I was expected to win this, but at least I didn't lose the game. That'd be that'd really be a blow. I'm expecting d four. Like I said, it unpins the d pawn. I think I'm gonna play that. Of an attack on the rock. Um, I think it should set some some moves up. If he brings the queen back. I think I'm just gonna collect the H pawn. Moves also playable. I don't see a reason to myself. Looking the H pawn is a little greedy here, I would have to say. We are down a pawn currently. I'm just gonna take the H pawn. That's no checks. Very important. Might try D4 now. Now this queen is so far back. Uh, we can just take the B pawn here. Maybe a little greedy. Ooh, I kind of like this move. Yeah. 
by being the first the queen trade. Queens come off. It's an easy win. I'm noticing there's no way to lose here, actually. There's no threat here. In here, that could just come up. He can't not reach screen trade. He gets made it if he makes screen just like D eight. In one seven. Go. I calculated the no oh, checks with the very important. Here you can literally, I think you can sack. But I'm going to play H4 first because he's got no move. I mean, he can take here. You're like a genius, but you literally just have h4. So let me, let me make sure. Zero, back, takes h4. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's completely. You might think I blundered for a second, but he's. Uh... On can't be stopped. I just take, I take. Oh, not even close. I don't have the energy they handle that game. It took a lot out of me for some reason. But it was a fun game. I did enjoy that game. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it too.